So now I'm going to do a numerical example that shows how to calculate nominal GDP, real GDP, CPI, and inflation. And so I'm going to do it the way, method that I use, and I'm different than sometimes other books, but this one actually just divides nominal GDP by CPI to get real GDP. Now sometimes you can freeze the price and use one year's prices both times, but the way I do it is I use a CPI-based method in my courses. So. First of all, we have to calculate nominal GDP, and if you remember, nominal GDP is measured in dollars. It's a yearly variable, usually changes by year, usually, or by quarter, uh, so that makes it a flow variable. It measures all final goods, new goods produced within the borders of a country within a given year. You've seen the definition of GDP. What we're going to do is look at it in terms of dollar values of different goods. So usually I make a basket of fruit, and I think of a fruit-based economy. So when I buy an apple, it incorporates all the labor, land, and capital, it incorporates all the goods that went into it, these intermediate goods, and also makes it kind of like this little economy where the more fruit I have, the better off I am. It's got four goods in two years, so it's pretty easy to, to follow. But if you look, a watermelon is more important than an apple because it's bigger, so we're going to have it have a higher price. And so remember, you can't compare literally apples and oranges. You have to think of the fact that counting goods is not enough. You have to use the dollar value because that captures differences in quality and resource use and other things. So I've got apples in one year one, 75 cents. I've got 100 of them. Pears are $1 and I have 80. $1.50 in orange times 200 and five watermelon, excuse me, five dollar watermelons for 50, uh, 50 of them. So 50 watermelons for five dollars each. So clearly watermelons are more important than apples and you can imagine why one's much larger. So year two, the price goes up of apples and there's more. Pears go up in price, but there's fewer. Uh, oranges, you see the same price, but there's more oranges and watermelons, they go down in price. And so we find a way to compare all those ups and downs of prices too. So first we'll do nominal GDP. So that's going to be the dollar value of all production. So one thing students do is, that's kind of wrong is that they actually will count. And they'll just say 100 plus 80 plus 200. That's wrong. Remember, you have to do it in dollars because that gives more weight to the bigger fruits, and the more weight to the larger, more important products in an economy. Now, you'd actually be doing this, the sum of PI, QI for every single good in the economy, millions of goods. And here we only have four. So we're going to take how many dollars worth of apples, pears, oranges, and watermelons. We're going to do it for two years. What we wind up having is that we have $75 worth of apples, $80 worth of pears, 80 times a dollar, 300, 200 times 150, and 250, 5 times 50. So that's the four components. We have a P times Q, 75, 80, 200, and 250. For four goods and add it up, we get $705. Now, these are the four components. We can do it the next year and we can see that we actually have some fruit, we have more, some fruit, we have less, but overall spending goes up. We have $110 of apples, $150 of pears, uh, $220 worth of oranges, excuse me, 330 worth of oranges because it's 1.5 times 220, and then 220 worth of watermelons. We actually have $810 worth of GDP. Now this growth rate, if you remember the growth rate, x2 minus x1 over x1 times 100%, this is actually 14.89% growth, right? which is very high. But the problem that we see is that part of this is rising prices and part of this is rising quantity. So the question economists face is, if I'm spending more on fruit, how much of it is me getting more fruit when I go shopping, and how much is it the larger price for the things I buy? If I buy two oranges one year for $2, and I buy two oranges the next year for $4, I spent $4. I doubled my spending, but I still have two oranges. What's really in my bag? So remember, the concept of a real variable controls for prices. So there's kind of two ways to control for prices. One way is to simply ignore the price change and just use one price twice. You can actually recalculate year two using year one prices. You can freeze it. You can hold P constant. And if you hold P constant, then you're left with Q. How much does Q change? The real variable is how much stuff, how much fruit, how many products in the economy. Controlling for prices. So you have to keep prices constant. All right? And so that's one way to do it. The other way that I do it is I divide by P. All right? And that sort of leaves Q. But now you need one price of everything. 
So this sort of brings together the concept of CPI and GDP together. If we have one number that represents all production in the economy, we can also come up with one number that represents all prices in the economy. Again, some go up. Apples go up, pears double, they go up a lot. Oranges stay the same and watermelons go down. And so some students will say, well, why can't we just average them? Two go up, two go down, it's a lot. It's because you have to give importance to the things that are big in the economy, the largely you know, produced things. If your economy is 16% healthcare, then healthcare is gonna be bigger than some product that's only like 0.001%, right? So I made a basket of goods. So I made a, literally, I made a fruit basket. And I put more oranges in than other items. And so this orange price is gonna mean that the biggest good in the basket didn't change in price. But apples and pears are in there too. Two apples, two pears, four oranges, and one watermelon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to price these twice. Two apples are $1.50. Two pears are uh, $2. Four oranges at $1.50 each are $6. And one watermelon is $5. So now I have my fruit basket. And if you go actually buy a fruit basket, it's got one price tag for a bunch of stuff in it. And you can see, does the price of fruit go up? Let's see how much of the basket of fruit go up. In real life, this would be the consumer price index with all the items that consumers really buy in it with one price. And then remember, we convert it to an index based on 100. So I take this two apples, $2, $4 for pears, $1.50 for oranges. Four oranges are going to be $6, and then one watermelon is now $4. So th these four items add up to $16. So now what we do is we pick a base here and say, well, we're going to convert one year to 100 and then do the same formula for the next year. I think of it like converting temperatures from Celsius to Fahrenheit. You do the same formula, turns 32 degrees Fahrenheit to zero Celsius, turns 212 Fahrenheit to 100 Celsius, 68, which is room temperature, to 20 Celsius. Warmer is still warmer, it's just a different scale. So I'm gonna divide everything by 1450. 1450 divided by 1450 is one, times 100 is 100. Notice the dollar signs drop off. This is based on 100 with no dollar sign, no percentage, it's just an index. 1600 divided by 1450 times 100 gives me 110.34. You can say prices rose because the, this price index went up. If you look at this in terms of percentage, it's 10.34%. That's why we use things based on 100 because percentages are very easy to calculate when you're based on 100. A list of CPIs year after year would keep rising if prices rose, but here you see that there's 10.34% inflation. Now, using my method, now I have my formula, nominal divided by CPI times 100%. That brings, if you divide by 100 and bring 100 back and add a percentage sign of, excuse me, add a dollar sign, so it's nominal divided by CPI times 100 with no sign on it, Right, then you would have nominal divided by CPI times 100. Now the dollar sign stays because there's no percentage. So what does this mean? This means that you can take this value, in this case $705, divide by 100, times 100, you still wind up with $705. $705. All right. So this isn't going to change the way we do it because one year is going to be unchanged and every other year is going to change in comparison. So in the base year, nominal GDP and real GDP are the same. All right, but in the second year, you could say, well, nominal GDP is 810. It went up, but CPI went up to 110. And so we're going to take this change in total spending and break it up with a change in price, change in quantity, remove the price part, and leave the quantity increase there. So if we take 810, which is the answer we got before, divide by 110.34 times 100, then you'll find out that the answer is $734.06. So $734.06. So that's kind of a big increase. But if you look at it, CPI is going to take out most of this growth. So if you have these numbers, you could say that there's $734 minus 705 divided by $705, all right, times 100%. All right, and so that will give you a much smaller increase in real GDP. So you take the new minus old over old times 100%. Interestingly enough, it's close to 4%. And if you look here, it's, you've got 14% growth, you've got 10% growth here. So this is going to be uh, 30, 
the 29 over 705. So it's going to be much smaller because much of the growth in nominal GDP is actually related to uh, prices. So if you add them up, total nominal GDP growth is actually the real growth plus the, the inflation rate. Right? So that's one way to do it. I like to do it because it's a little easier to manipulate, but it shows a number of concepts. So first of all, we calculated the production of our fruit farm in two years. How many fruit did we grow, but what's the dollar value in two years? We saw that we're producing more fruit in dollar terms. But secondly, we're taking out the fact that the dollar has changed value. So we're taking out the price increase. So what I did was I made a fruit basket and figured out that it went up in price from year to year. I priced the fruit basket twice, made it 100 in the base year, and got two CPIs. I used the real GDP formula here and I divided. This is unchanged. Nominal GDP and real GDP are the same in both years. But real GDP is much lower in the second year because we took out the inflation component and it didn't grow by as much. It grew by less than 4%. So that's the idea that we have, uh, we have those two components split up so we're able to show nominal GDP, real GDP, real GDP growth, inflation, CPI, all with these numbers. But long story short, economists are worried about real GDP. Controlling for prices is just one step. Well, if you find out that there's more fruit to eat, your life is better off. If the economy grows, we assume that people are happier, have more goods and services to consume. So the real GDP growth rate is the thing that we care about most in the economy.